Hey guys, in this video, the brilliant Mr. B is going to be working you through questions involving squares, cubes, roots and powers of different things. So starting off with some easy questions, moving through to some hard questions, and you can jump into this video wherever you want to. The links to all the different timestamps are going to be down in the pinned comment, so you can use this as you want to. Now if you want thousands more examples, then they're all waiting for you over on my website. So first, we're going to find the square of 5. Now, this is written out in plain English, but you may also see it written like this. So we have 5, and rather than writing it square with all those letters, you can just write a little 2. And then what this means is that we have 2, that's why it's written with a 2, and they are being multiplied together. And 5 times 5 is 25. So the square of 5 is 25. Now, when we write 5 with the 2, we normally say 5 to the power of 2. The 2 referring to the two fives, or whichever question you have. The reason why you might see it written as square is referring to geometry. And if I just show you, if we draw a 8 by 5 square, the length of the square is 5, and the height of the square is 5, representing the two fives. And if you count up the number of small squares on the inside, you'll see that there's exactly 25. So there's a link between the numbers, 5 times 5 is 25, and the geometry where a 5 by 5 square will also give 25. So moving on to question 2, we want to find the square of 8. So that is 8 to the power of 2. That means 8 multiplied by 8. And if you think about your times tables, 8 times 8 is 64. Now question 3, we want 14 squared. So again, we're going to have two 14s multiplied together. Then you're probably not confident with your 14 times table. So let's do a column method for 14 times 14. So 4 times 4 is 16, carry the 1. 4 times 1 is 4, plus the 1 we carried is 5. Now moving on to the 10s. 1 times 4 is 4, leaving our answer in the 10s column. And 1 times 1 is 1. Fill up any gaps with a 0, and add up the two numbers for our final answer. That will give us 6 plus 0 is 5, plus 4 is 9, and the 1 gives us 196. If there is anything like a 14 times table, where maybe you feel like you have to memorise it and you can't remember the number, don't worry about searching your brain and trying to memorise it really hard. Just do a column method and work it out. Moving on to question 4. To find the square root of 64 backwards now. So if you were squaring 64, you would do 64 times 64. You'd multiply two numbers together. If you're square rooting, you're finding which two numbers share the same, multiply together to make 64. And if you think about your times table, 8 times 8 makes 64. So when we want the square root of 64, which can also be written using this symbol, the answer is 8. We're saying that 8 squared is 64, so the square root of 64 is 8. So question 5, same method. So the square root of 144, we are looking for two numbers which multiply together to make 144. If you're not sure what that's going to be, then we can start off with, we know that 10 times 10 is 100, and 100 smaller than 144. So let's try something larger. So then you can think, well, what would 11 times 11 be? And if you're not sure, you can do a column method and work it out. And that's 121. So then if 11 is too small, we can try 12. You do a column method for 12. And if you did, you'd find that 12 times 12 is... 144. When we ask for the square root 
of 144. The answer is 12 because two 12s multiplied together make 144. Now, the medium questions work the same way. So when we say we want to find the cube of three, we can write that instead by writing three to the power of three. So when we say square, it's power two, and we say cube, it's power three. This means we have three threes, and the three threes are being multiplied together so it works exactly the same way as squaring, where you have two of the number and be multiplied. So we just have one extra of the number to multiply. I suggest you do this one step at a time. So we'll do three times three first, which will give us nine. And then we can do our answer nine times the last three, which should give us 27. So the cube of three, or three to the power of three, is 27. Also like squaring, the word cube is used sometimes because it links to geometry. And if you had a cube that had a length of three and a width of three and a height of three, then the volume of that cube would be 27. So the same method for question two, we want to find the cube of four. So that's four to the power of three. And we're going to have three fours all multiplied together. We'll do one step at a time. So four times four is 16. And then we'll have 16 times four. Little trick with times by four, you can just double it twice. So double 16 to 32 and double 32 to 64. So the cube of four is 64. Now moving on to question three, we have the cube of six, a shorter way to write that would be six to the power of three. So we would have three sixes and we are multiplying them together. So again, we'll start off one step at a time. Six times six is 36. And then we wanna do 36 times six. Now that might be a bit much for mental arithmetic. So let's do a column method, Thirty times six. And don't be scared, whenever you get to a question that you can't do, don't try and memorize it. Don't try and work it out in your head. Just do a method, a written method, like column multiplication, and it'll be much quicker. So units first, six times six is 36, carrying three, and then the tens, six times three is 18, plus three we carried, that gives us 106. For question four and five, cube roots work a similar way to square roots, but instead of which two numbers, right, for a cube root, we want to know which three numbers multiply together to make eight, and it'll be the same number three times. So one times one times one will be one. That's too small. Let's try a larger number. Two times two is four, and four times two is eight. Our uh, answer be two. So the cube root of eight would be two. Look at the way that I wrote that. The square root sign with three represents cube root. So it's just a shorter way of writing it out without using all the letters. Now for the cube root of 125, we are looking for three numbers that are all the same and they multiply together to make 125. Now, 2 times 2 times 2 made 8. We've already got above 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. And we can see that 4 times 4 is 64. Uh, we can see as well that 6 times 6 times 6 is 196, which is too large. So I wonder if this could be 5. So let's check. So 5 times 5. Could 25 times 5 be 125? Well, I can tell you that it is. Maybe not sure. Just do a column method and work it out. So the cube root of 125 is 5. Now moving on to the hard questions, we have 2 to the power of 4. So the little 4 light with squares and cubes to the power of 4, they're all being multiplied together. 
work it out one step at a time. So two times two is four, four times two is eight, and eight times two is 16. Three to the power of five follows the same method. So the little number just tells you how many of the base number you're multiplying together. Again, we'll work it out one step at a time. So three times three is nine, nine times three is 27. And now I've done three of these, I've got two more to go and you might not be very confident with your mental arithmetic. So we're gonna move over to using some written methods. So we had 27 and we are multiplying that by three units first. Three times seven is 21, carry the two. And then onto the tens, three times two is six, plus the two we carried is 80, 81. I'll just recap what I've done, so I don't lose count. So we had three, three times three is nine, nine times three is 27, and 27 times three is 81. Now let's multiply 81 by three, because I have one more three left. So units first, three times one is three, and then the tens, three times eight is 24. Carry over the two. So that gives us 243 as our answer. So again, be very patient with this, do one step at a time, don't try and do it in your head. And when the mental arithmetic gets too much, use some written methods and that should help you stop getting confused and help you do this quite quickly as well. Question three, we have five to the power of four. So since the power of four, we'll have four fives and they are all being multiplied together. Again, we'll do one step at a time. So five times five is 25. 25 times five is 125, which you might remember from a previous question. And then we need to do 125 times five. So again, I'll use a written method. So 125 multiplied by five. So we do five times five, which is 25, carry the two. Five times two is 10, plus the two we carried is 12. And then five times one is five, plus the one we carried is a six. That gives an answer of 625. Moving back to roots for question four, we have 81 and the root is the power of four. Four numbers that multiply together to make 81. So it's just working backwards compared to the other questions we've just done. And if you look at the previous questions, you'll notice that these numbers get quite large quite quickly. Multiplying three fives together gets us quite a large number. Four fives gets quite a large number. Try and stick to smaller numbers when you're having a guess. So if we have a guess at two first, that would be two times two is four. Four times two is eight. And eight times two is 16. So that's too small. Let's try threes. Three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. And 27 times three should get us to 81. So the answer is going to be three. For the final question, we want six numbers which multiply together to 64. Now, if you think about it, multiplying four threes together already has us at 81, which is larger than 64. So three would be too big. And if you just multiply by one, one times one is one, times one is one, multiplying by one will just keep the number the same. So the answer must be two. Now we can check that. So I was counting up on my fingers as I use up the my six twos. So two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. 16 times two is 32 and 32 times 2 is 64. And I just counted up that I use six twos on my fingers, so I know I've got the right answer.